Israeli residents living next to the Gaza border have been forced to evacuate their homes in a hurry. Many were forced to leave their pets behind. We're talking about cases where people themselves had to run with their babies on their hands. I, I, stories of them, you know, jumping out, out of windows with their babies. And they, the stories that I hear are of people trying to call their dogs, right? Or cats is even harder to come with them, but the dogs are so afraid um, that they hide or they run away. Um, and they just had to run. They were running for their lives. So a lot of the dogs, which are, right, they're, they're another, and cats, there are other another family member that was just left behind. So that's why it was really important for us to just go and get, you know, extract them as fast as possible. Dr. Shira Yasve from the Dogs and Heroes organization realized the problem early on and is trying to rectify it. Dogs and Heroes is a spontaneous um, grouping of a few volunteers, friends from before the war started. Uh, some of us are um, graphic designers. I'm a veterinary doctor. There's people from all across the, the spectrum of, of professions. Um, and basically when the war broke, we understood that animals would have to be, animals' needs uh, would have to be addressed in some way and that there's going to be a crisis also on the animal front. So and already like the the same night uh, of the 7th in October, we, we started our uh, gathering volunteers. For the past two weeks, thousands of Israelis from all over the country have come together to reunite families with their pets. A war room in Beit Kama in the south of Israel was established. And from there, the teams leave for their assignments. These volunteers are headed to another operation to extract dogs from the dangerous areas. The areas that are still closed military zones under the control of the IDF. Don't try run to a shelter. Just lie on the ground and put your hands on your head. Don't kneel. Same goes if we are driving. Quickly halt the cars, get as far away as we can from the car, and lie flat on the ground. In Kerem Shalom or any other village, when we look after animals, if the dog runs off, let us know so we can come with you. Don't get too far away from us. We can be with the forces of the village. They will direct us where to go. I'm sure you all know as well, but just please stay with us. For those who are carrying weapons, we are here to safeguard you. Please leave your gun in the holster, except when we are under fire. It doesn't phase these volunteers. When the war broke out, I was basically just at home and I didn't really do anything to, to help. And I felt a little bad with myself that I can do something uh, better than just sitting at home watching the news. It can be a bit scary sometimes, but it's for the dogs. For the volunteers, the satisfaction of reuniting pets with owners is worth the risk. <laughs> <laughs> this dog owner came all the way from Eilat, where he and his family have been staying since the war broke out, after his dog was found in one of the villages. He tells the volunteers that his second dog is still inside. Not a minute goes by and another group of volunteers come back with the missing dog. The, the, the unions are unbelievable. They're unbelievable. It's, I think it's also a, you know, a sliver of, of hope that if the dog came back, then maybe that the kidnap, right, that the kidnap people would come back as well, that it shows the possibility of getting back someone that you thought you, you, you lost track of. <laughs> hey,